is meant for an adult audience. Love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. content. Listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, everybody. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. I think uh, the peanut butter killed the tarantula last night. No, right? my yeah. God. Yeah. I am devastated. Yeah. What's well, tough? now we know how to kill a tarantula. <laughs> Just give it, uh, put it, put it in my ward for a couple of days. Set out some peanut butter traps. I uh, I caught a tarantula a few days ago. I've been keeping it in my garage in a paint bucket. It could have been the uh, could have been the semi gloss paint that was in the bucket. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it had dried mostly, but it did kind of smell like paint when I opened oh, it up. But uh, I give it a little water in there and. Uh, I give it some uh, what I thought was tarantula food, which was uh, peanut butter, and uh, I opened it. And it was dead. And it was tough. It's like sure it wasn't its exoskeleton left behind after it molted. Oh no, no, that would be yes. Is now raping my wife. <laughs> I was. Uh, I opened the bucket. I looked at it, and I was like, "Come on, boy!" And it didn't do anything. And then I leaned the bucket to one side, and it slid all the way over and crashed the side. <laughs> and then I, and I thought, well, maybe it's playing possum. And I leaned it over, and it slid the other way, and I went. Oh my God, the tarantula's dead. Oh and I God. thought, okay. There and I go. just chucked it in the bushes and moved on. Oh my God. Because life is for the living. That tarantula would want me to get on with my life. Yeah. I mean, that's the way he would have wanted it. I'm sure. All right. So, Did you uh, pet its thorax? No, because I was scared it would spring back yeah, to life right. because when I, when I met it, I thought it was dead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I brought it back to life. It's an interesting strategy on the part of the uh, tarantula. Maybe it got let free i had some thoughts about that and i thought that the i slid it back and forth in the bucket a few yeah. times like it was a you know ship on the high seas yeah, you yeah. know just boom and nah and it wasn't curled up right, it was yeah. uh spread out yeah, yeah. all right uh well now we yeah. don't we don't have to talk about this anymore it's good we actually have to take calls now hmm? we actually take calls who are they okay well ginger lynn isn't here either so you don't have to be that's right preoccupied yeah. jessica yeah you're 14? Yeah. What's up? Um, I don't know how to tell my boyfriend I'm bi or my grandma. Uh, you have sex with girls? Mm. Once. 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 How old was the other partner? 14. 14. And when did this happen? Huh? When did this happen? Um, mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. No, you don't know when you've had sex with girls yeah, through when you're 14. Did it happen a month ago, a year ago, two uh, years ago? Um, like uh, two weeks ago. Two, two weeks, weeks ago. While you were in this relationship with your boyfriend. Yeah. And how old's your boyfriend? 15. Mm-hmm. And why is it you need to tell your grandmother about this? Because, um, I don't know because it's like I'm keeping something like really big from her. I don't know how to tell her. Let's, yeah. let's ask a question differently. That, that you're angry yeah, at How her? pissed off at your grandmother are you? Huh? How pissed off at your grandmother are you? I don't know really. Well, tell I'm, us a medium. It's easier to like, go to my mom, though. Where's your mom? In the city. Mm-hmm. Oh, of and, course. And um, you live in the country? No, I live in Guthrie. You're Guthrie. out? You're in Guthrie? Guthrie? Oh, okay. Yeah. Near Bob's uh, hunting shack? <laughs> you're out You're out there by the big five off the interstate? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you're out in Guthrie? Yep. How do you pronounce that? Guthrie. Okay. And uh, your mom... I so, Yeah, your mom's uh, over in the... Uh, she in the woods the or city, is the, the, city? City, the city? Yeah. Okay. Why don't you live with your mom? Mm, me and her... Uh, me and my sister don't get along, and I grew up with my grandma, pretty much. So, who are you more angry at, your grandma or your mom? Um, actually... I'm not really sure. Well, you're so pretty, ang- angry at both of them. Why are you yeah. angry at your grandmother? She yeah. just came in and did the best she could. Because she never let me go anywhere or anything. Mm-hmm. That's like that, huh? Kenny, you on your toes there? Huh? All right. We just want to know uh, whether to drop you because uh, you uh, dropped the S-bomb on the air. Okay, so Jessica, you're angry... Yeah. You're uh, bisexual. You uh-huh. live in we Guthrie. Know, you're whatever sexual. We don't even know. <laughs> okay. It's way Bra- too early. Break to up with your boyfriend. You're not into him. Yeah, break up with the boyfriend. Try not to have any relationships for a little while. And um, 
work on that anger towards your, your mother and your grandmother because and I, that's I, really where a lot of this is coming from. I know this is going to sound like a uh, brash prediction, but Jessica is uh-huh. 14 years old. Junior yeah. college. No. No. I predict, I predict she's going to be pregnant. By 13. Oh, my I, God. I know it sounds crazy mathematically, but she is that far. Well, let's test the water. Jessica, have you ever been pregnant? No. Okay. Are you having sex with your boyfriend? I had sex in April. Mm-hmm. With and what did you, what'd you use for protection? A sock we puppet? Used a condom. 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 All right. All right. Do you, uh, in a, you had sex with him in April, and that's the last time? Only time. Only time. Why, you didn't like it? Mm, no. I just right. moved. You moved. You had a bowel movement? No, I moved away. Oh, you went up, you went up to Guthrie and he's yeah. out in the city? Okay. All right, Jessica, uh, do not get pregnant. Uh, don't tell your parents what you are or you are not. Your only reason in doing so is to try to piss them off. Yeah. End the relationship. Not that they don't deserve it. Yeah. I'm sure they're horrible people. End the relationship with your boyfriend because it's not anything you're committed to and you're cheating on him. And just and try to just get focused on school and simpler matters right now. I don't, I don't say this that often because I'm not a big fan, but find Jesus Christ. There's a, there's a hand. You know what Jesus Christ is to me? That's what methadone is to you. Yeah. It's a okay. last case scenario. Okay. But it, it works It's sometimes. worst case. It's like, yeah, yeah it's, it's a last ditch effort at it, salvation. It, it prevents, de- it, it, it creates a chronic state other than death. Yeah, we call it harm avoidance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and when I say harm, I'm talking about me, really, yeah, yeah. in society. Yeah. Thank you. Angela? Hi. You're 22? <clears throat> yeah. Um, I have a question for, well, I guess both of you. Um, I watch your show every night while I'm driving to work. Um, you you I'm watch our girl. show? Hang on, hang on one second. You watch our show? I know what she means. Sorry. Listen to it. I'm okay, nervous. okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Right. I was um, curious. Hello? We're yeah. here. We're here. Sorry. Um, yeah. Um, I'm actually in my car right now. I'm driving to a call. I'm... I'm an escort, and I've been an escort for, like, oh, well, I guess three years or so. Um, And for the past two years, I've been having sex with my clients. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, what are you supposed to be doing? uh, Well, I'm an escort. It's not legal for us to do that. We're supposed to just do, like, dances and massages. I know, but spend time with them and stuff. I know, or oriental massage parlors are legal, except for they finish you with a hand job, <laughs> which is illegal, but they would be out of business if they just gave you a massage. I think everyone knows what you do as an escort. Yeah, right? I'm an escort. I don't, I don't actually, I don't work at a parlor or anything. I go to calls. I mean, it's, right. It's not you, to be you, sex, you misunderstood but, my example, but. I'm saying it's uh, not surprising that you have sex with your clients. Right. That's part okay. sort of comes with the territory. Yes, it comes on the territory. And what's yeah, your question? The other, the other girls I work with say that they don't. But yeah. the question is, is that's, that's, is that's this what you're like, supposed to do. Well, yeah? basically, I don't unless they pay me extra. And right. the thing yeah. is, am I like, I feel like I am kind of like deteriorating like as a person sometimes. I feel right. kind of messed up, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Like are I you, feel are like you gonna I'm have, supposed to be doing yeah. it, you know? Well, do you have right? Do you have regular clients? Oh yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. lots of and, them. Um, lots but, of them. How much money do you make a week? Um, I don't really know. I don't really count it. I just know I pay all my bills. All right. Um, you doesn't sweat the details. <laughs> I make about five hundred or six hundred dollars a night. Okay, oh, wow. and do you just see one guy a night? No, I see about three to five. Wow. Three to five. Jesus yeah. Jesus Christ, that's a bargain. I mean, uh, so... Well, we charge 200 an hour and I get half of it. So really, uh-huh. it's kind of not a bargain. <laughs> yeah, but but if you're having sex with a guy, he pays you extra under the table, right? Yeah, so I guess I'm actually getting more. I don't know. Now, what but, do you charge for the sex? Uh, I charge usually 50 to 100 extra. Depending on uh, what nationality the guy is? Uh, yeah. No, depending upon how nasty they are. Um, right. <laughs> well, that's what I'm talking about. All right. If 50, it seems like you do a little better in 50. I don't that's, know, but um, I mean, so I guys just, keep... my, my real question is, is um, like, why do I do this? Like, is there something wrong with me that yes. makes yes, me yes. want to do this? Yes. 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 Okay. You're <laughs> responding to some real internal deep-seated internal issues 
What I mean, happened do when I you were? Sound like I'm sick or something? <laughs> what, ha- what happened? No. What happened when you were about ten, ten or eleven? Oh God! Um, when I was eight, um, this whole incident happened with my dad, and like he beat the living crap out of me, and um, so there was that and, was the physical and, abuse. And there was his brother did something to me when I was young, and um, sexual abuse. Um, I'm going with yes. Yeah, I'd say. Did some things yeah. really sexual abuse. Your uncle, your uncle sexually abused you when you were a child. Basically, yeah. yeah. No, All right. It's not basically, it's for sure. Well, he did, right? Yeah, he did. He he had sex with me from the time I was like about, I don't know, for like a few years. started when I was like about five or six. Okay. So yeah. that's hideous, horrible abuse. And then your dad on top of that beat you up? Yeah, but it was just like one or two times that my dad did that. I know it doesn't sound By the way, right. what, uh, let well, me one just... or two, it's, uh, that's, that's enough. And so, yeah. What's your uncle doing now? Is he a publicist? <laughs> no, I don't know. No. I think he's in prison. He was a Oh, practice. good. Oh, good. Yeah. Hopefully he's being brutally raped in prison. Well, again, my, uh, my dad, Angela, he, like, he doesn't do anything bad anymore. He's like this reformed thingy. He's like an Orthodox Jewish guy now, and he's like trying you. to be a rabbi or something. I don't know. Hold on, <laughs> rabbi. What he converted? Yeah. Because uh, no, no, this is not no, the no, work of a Jew. Jew. He was a Jew, but now he's like a really good Jew. <laughs> Um, Angela, there's no accident we got right into this material. This is the material that causes the behaviors that you're getting into right now. And if you want to do some, if you, not, oh, okay. It's like. She's agreeing. Don't be a wise ass. Well, no, she, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I mean, I'm listening. Um, Okay. That's what I got. The, yeah, the, if, the, if, the horrible abuse is what uh, leads you in the path to whoever's house you're gonna going over to hump right, right. now. It, it's it's a it's a way it's a way of responding to the wiring that gets left behind by these experiences. And if you there are treatments available, and if you want to avail yourself of them, you should. But uh, yeah, you, this is, it's, it's like stop. it's it's an addiction or a compulsion, and um, you might uh, consult with uh, the National Council on Sexual Addiction and Compulsivity, the NCSAC. You've got a website, ncsac.org. And uh, you know, look for a therapist in your area that's got uh, experience and expertise in this area. That's a delightful brother who's uh, having well, every, sex. Everybody has an uncle that does that, don't they? It's somebody's brother, right? Yeah, I guess you're right. <clears throat> I, mean, I mean, just think about... I, I know, Drew, you never, you never play up this angle, but for me... Uh, the ultimate slap in the face to the brother, which is, uh, hey, I'm going to have sex with your five-year-old daughter for a few years. Are we cool <laughs> with that? Yeah, this is it's blood. Your brother, treating her nice, bro. Yeah, I got her some soft swirl. She was into it, so we're even. Well, she was into it. <laughs> she wanted it. It took about a year and a half to break her in, but after that, you know, she gave me those. She gave me those bedroom eyes. It's uh, way she wears those underoos all hiked up. I mean, really. That, can't we just put a bullet in the uh, head of guys like this? Yeah. I mean, uh, listen, I understand people that uh, torch their businesses for insurance fraud. I even understand the guys who uh, poison their wives and try to collect the insurance. I, I understand all the ones where they're like, hey, there's some money. You know, robbing banks, all that. Like, I want money. I need money. I'm going to do something illegal to get money. But the part where it's just uh, nothing in it, I just got to bust a nut with the five-year-old. We can't agree that that's fundamentally flawed. Well, well he was sexually abused too, as a as a five or eight year old. I mean, that's that's where that. Well, all right, you but listen, that. listen. When a when a when a dog is uh, raised by guys uh, by breeders who breed them to fight, and then yeah. they hop the fence and maul the six year old neighbor, we get rid of them. Still put a bullet in their head. It's true. We well, feel bad. Why did Angela have to call us if she listens to the show? Why did she need us to spell this out for her? It's all right there. I find that people don't uh, glean as much uh, information uh, off the shows we'd like to think, Drew. <laughs> that breaks my heart. <laughs> Sarah? Hi. You're 22? Yeah. Um, What's okay. up? Okay, about two weeks ago, I went down to Planned Parenthood to get an exam, everything like that. And then a couple of days later, they called me to tell me that I had chlamydia. And um, I basically, except for one other person, been sleeping with the same person for two and a half years. And Except he, for one other person. What happened with that? Well, we've been, the last year, we've been um, off and on a lot. So, it's back That's in fun. December, I slept with one other guy who I didn't use protection then. And, I mean, it could be from him. I don't know. But thing yep, is, I, there yeah. it is. There it is. See, Why wouldn't I, it be from him? Yeah. Well, because my boyfriend slept with someone last August. 
Mm. And he didn't use, and he didn't know her. I grew up with this guy. I've like known him forever, and it was. Oh, like, then he can't have chlamydia. How dare you? No, I know you're right, but I mean, but my biggest question is, is that my boyfriend now is telling me that he's gotten checked out and he doesn't have anything. So I'm wondering, first of all, if that's possible for us to have. I mean, we've been for the last since then, since that guy that I said, we've been pretty much back together for good, and well, I haven't been here, with anybody else, and we've here's had. The deal. Maybe, maybe the test is wrong, but you should be treated anyway, just in case. Well, I, I have been. Okay, he, and probably he, he should be treated too because his test could be wrong also. Okay, yeah, because back a couple months ago, he was having like those symptoms. He had yeah. symptoms of, you know, the discharge, the painful urination, everything, and his doctor still said he didn't have it. Well, he, he definitely... For a bladder infection. And definitely, they sh you should both be treated. It's a mm -hmm. serious issue for you more so than for him. Mm -hmm. But just to protect you, you should be treated. The treatment is very simple. It's a single dose of an antibiotic and yeah. power your That's what I mean, I did it. I, we yeah. actually, I broke up with him right before I found that out. Your boyfriend? Yeah. Um, so I, I'm fine now. I drink right. the drink. Right. What, what about the poor guy who you've known your whole life has probably been pining for you this whole time and <laughs> finally got a crack at you who you had sex with and then dumped again to go back with the boyfriend? Is he heartbroken? No, I don't think he was, no. Really? I think, yeah. I mean, he knew the situation. It was just like we were stupid, this one thing that happened. But he, I mean, he's liked you the whole time. I mean, I could have. Well, I, I think he was the bullpen just to get back at the boyfriend. She yeah, said he, she's known him the whole time. Though he hasn't showed me any. You know, he hasn't like we. You know, called. He's or just that or guy anything. in school. You know, you can call on for the bullpen. Yeah, you had him lined up before you broke up with the boyfriend. No, I wouldn't say I had him lined he's, up. It just she, happened. He's the go-to guy. You knew she. You yeah. always knew he was around, though, right? Right to go. I guess a so. anybody anybody who's known him since whatever age could call upon him. Well, that's true, but why why wouldn't he have liked her for those years, Drew? How come you're not I getting think, that? I, I get he's just the guy that the the guy that that she could just. Right. Yeah, he I never had a crush on you. Yeah, you're right. He's he's just he knew what was going on. Yeah. That's my question. So, but yeah, so I mean, is it? But because he's said he's been checked up twice. Like he's gone back and the doctor had him checked again. Uh, and he, the doctor Be said that as it may, whatever. You got treated. You need to get treated. Boyfriend should be treated as well. I don't know why his test was negative. Sometimes the infection can be localized in the tubes with you. And though, you know, he still should have had something. But then he did a while ago. So it's very confusing. Both should be treated just to protect yourself. I'd like to get that call one day from the bullpen. I start warming up by uh, humping a sofa pillow. And then you know, yeah. I jump into the car that's uh, shaped... It's got the. Oscar it's a golf Wiener. cart. Ah, it's just gonna make the Bob Hope golf cart. <laughs> I hop into that. I come flying out. They open the. They open the fence. I come flying out into that thing. Doing a jump. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know mm -hmm. what? You know, women mm. all have that go-to guy they can just go to. Yeah, that's you know called I mean? uh, North America. No, 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 yeah, yeah, but they, but they only go to the certain. They, like your friend Chris is one of those guys. Mm -hmm. That's the go-to guy. Yeah. What? what? And it's weird. Well, let me tell you some about women, and here's why they're uh, extra stupid. <laughs> women don't base a whole lot on logic or sense. They base it on sort of um, heat, meaning yeah. w why does a handbag become Mimetic. popular? It's called mimesis. They mimic. If everyone else is doing it, I got to do it. Yeah, there, there's a handbag yeah. around for a long time. No one knows. Yeah. No one cares. Then one woman picks it up. Another woman picks it up. The next thing you know, there's some heat Momentum. build up Momentum. about a Prada bag. Yeah. Now, everyone's got to get hold of this, and that's what that is. And that I think, and women do that more than guys, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, guys don't have that momentum. Now, what guys will do is, sure, all guys want a Ferrari. That, that's because a Ferrari's extra nice. It's a great car, yeah. Women, whether it's shoes or handbags or hotels or whatever it is, oftentimes there's not much difference from one to the next. But one picks up one, they all go for it. It's like, uh, I know it's cliche, but it's like when they have those uh, sales the day after uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas or something. The women all part, and they all grab onto something, and next thing you know, a tug of war begins. This happens with a man's penis, too. But, but there are certain guys, though, that, that get the heat right away. They get the and, heat. And that's boom, yeah. and it takes off. Right. And, and then, the guys that do not get the heat. But then it becomes like a perpetual motion machine. Yeah, yeah. Once they get pushed in that direction, they just keep yeah, rolling guys, and humping then, then and the rolling and but, humping. But then the male can kind of wear it. Then he can go to another city, and he's still wearing that stink. He gets to bring the what Prada bag with what him. What is that? I don't know, but women... Women aren't into what's best or what's newest or what's nicest. They're into what the other chick wants. And that's how they'll decide what they want. Yeah. And uh, then it becomes a competition. Actually, you could argue that women are more competitive than men that way. With each other. 
managers competing with the world, right, you know, right. with the, just you know existence with the right. If we had to compete against yes, you know, we, scarecrows, we, we, that's try, what we, we do. Com- we compete with like gravity. Yeah, right. Whereas you, they women uh, compete with um, one another. That's yeah. it. Just one another. That's it. And that's why they don't <laughs> get anywhere. By the way, all they do is fight. It's a lot like the blacks. All right, let's. Oh, uh, oh well, it's true. They go at it. They got to get along. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Where are we here, Drew? Six. Uh-huh. Listen, if I find, oh, let me tell you this, as a guy, if there's a hot chick, a super smoking hot chick yep. that no other guys you, are into. It's good times. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's, perfect. it's the best day of your life. Yeah. We'll decide who's hot. Yeah, you don't want other guys. I don't need nine you? of my jack off buddies trying to get at her to no. decide if she's hot or not. That's I know if she's hot and if she's hot and no one else and she doesn't have a crowd around so her. So much better. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, right. You're right. Guys are basically lazy. All right. Where are we here, six, Drew? Six, six. Oh, all right. Ashley. Hi. You're 18? Yes, I am. What's up? Um, I've been with this guy for about 14 months, actually, and like two weeks after we got together, we had sex, and I was his first, and he was not my first. And three months went by, and I thought I was pregnant, so I moved in with his family, and um, we've had a lot of problems with that. So I'm living with my mom, and he's living with his family now. But the thing is, is like, um, we're like not attractive sexually as much as we were when I first moved in. You're not as attracted, you're not as attracted to him. Oh, both of us. Uh, let's just talk, let's just speak about what's happening to you. Why? um, How do you know he's not attracted to you? He's 17. He's kind of like, he wants to marry me. I mean, we're all engaged and everything. But, um, the thing is, is I was his first and he wants to feel like what another person feels like. Same deal. He want, yeah, he wants to experiment with that, and I've been like trying to understand yeah. how, like, I'm in a different position than he is, so I'm trying to understand his position. No, his and position I, is this thing is over with, Ashley. That's the position. He doesn't, he doesn't know how to end it, and neither do you. And you shouldn't be getting married at seventeen, eighteen. That's crazy. Well, I, it's. Yeah. I feel like I've already done all I yeah. want to do, and I uh-huh. want to please him. Yeah. yeah, but but listen, it, this is going to be this is going to be. If you guys get married, you'll take this energy to your grave, which is the I've I've done my plane, I've sowed my wild oats, I've uh, I've experienced all I want to experience. You who have not experienced anyone but me should be happy with me. That's gonna that's gonna ruin him. This this is way more than it appears. I bet you. How many guys you've been with? Eight. Drew, answer me. <laughs> what the hell Today's happened? A Wednesday Ashley. Answer. Yeah. How many guys you been with? Eight. Eight guys. Uh-huh. And, and uh, he's been with one girl, and that's you. Yeah. Do you count him amongst the eight, or does he make nine? Yeah, he make, he's part of the eight. He's part of the eight? All yeah. right. But Ashley... He's number three. That's the problem. Um, uh, what, you left your family because you thought you were pregnant? What's going on with your family? Um, they're just, like, really abusive. My stepmom... Yeah. Dad was number uh, five. What happened to your real mom? Three. He's, Actually, she had to give me up to um, for adoption when I was Why? nine because nine. Um, my stepfather was beating me. Fantastic. And, and so what, was she, over, what was she like? Um, custody. What was uh, she like she during was, those nine years? I don't really remember. Don't She's remember like nine years of your life. Okay, Ashley. Uh, this is a big, This is a really yeah. serious situation. Ashley. You, you've, you've been abused. You can't marry anyone for ten years. Yeah. You you, you got to. Huh? Do and don't this. don't get pregnant for Christ's sake. Can you not get pregnant? <laughs> Can I you really please? Once. I know, I don't but have a kid, but yeah, I, I know, but it, please, uh, uh, if you do, leave it in a dumpster or something. Let a family of raccoons she, raise it. Just she don't say she have, has a kid. No, she lost. Did what'd you do with your first kid? I got raped, and you, um, I lost. Did what? I got raped when I was fourteen, and I miscarried it. Okay, all right. It's not having a child. All right, um, but, but you got I raped. have another question, like. Now that we're still together, even if we don't, like, last, is there anything I can do, like, right now to make our sex life more? Yes, you can, you can, you can uh, get on the patch, the pill, Norplant, <laughs> um, as, the tire tubes, and have them wear five condoms. That'll make it more well, exciting. I'm on the pill, but, like, Good. we've tried anal, Good. and we've tried oral. There we go. And usually, that's that's usually, I mean, just as good as any counseling I've ever... <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> no, listen, Ashley, forget yeah. it. You, you break it up. You guys are tired. 
You're not going to find... You're not going to get married. It's not, not going to work out. an arousing experience right. that somehow makes sex gratifying. There's, there's, there's right. too much going on with you with your interpersonal... How about a little problems. therapy for all, all you've been through? Oh, therapist pissed me off. I can't go to them no more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to cut my losses here. Yeah. Go lesbian. Go born again lesbian. Ooh, okay. nice combo. Yeah. All right. Nice listen, trip. listen, Ashley. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, you know, I know everything, right? Oh, of course. I, I'm a genius. I'm Drew, am I ever wrong? Never. <laughs> Never wrong. Look, you've been through hell. You got to get some therapy. Here's your, here's your, ch here's, what kind of music do you listen to? Metal. Okay, nice. perfect. This is perfect. Start listening to classical. It oh, makes you smarter. <laughs> and why did you listen to classical well, and start walking? Well, but what you will have trouble doing, Ashley, is being quiet and alone. The, the, your sort of engines running overtime because of the post-traumatic stress reaction. Why don't you get involved with a group with other women, maybe trauma survivors, rape survivors, that sort of thing? Group process. That's where you go. Forget right, about Drew. boys for a while. Let yeah, me girl. let me tell you something. When yeah. I'm in charge, oh, as you know, governor. governor. I'm running for governor of California. Please, please collect. We need 60 <clears throat> signatures on his behalf. You'll pay the 3500 bucks, won't you? Yeah. All right, 60 signatures, Corolla for governor. We're, it's game on. Let me explain what a vote for Corolla is. I what bet a, it's a message. It's, it, you, that's it, right. I, if I voted for you, it would be a message. I'll tell you, I'm going to make you Surgeon General of California, oh, Drew. <laughs> well, if there utopia. is such a thing, if there's local sur Surgeon Generals, we I will gonna, make you, you that You and I, one. I'm a lieutenant. We're going we're gonna to cut taxes. That's we're right. We're going to cut the size of government except for health services. That's right. And uh, important uh, safety issues. We're gonna, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to raise issues, not eyebrows. But you'll send a message. A, a vote for Corolla is what, Drew? What is it? A message to the fat cats in, in Washington, Sacram Sacramento, in Washington, and Sacramento. parts of Sacramento, and in parts of Las Vegas, and in Washington. It is a message. It is a slap in the face. And let me tell you this: I'm going to send a wake up call to these fat cats too. When you're elected. When I'm elected. That's right. All right. I'm fired up now, Drew. And when I'm in, in charge, in here, I will. A, a part of my plan will be collecting all the Ashleys of the world. I will uh, cement in their vagina <laughs> for for. For eight years, I want no children from uh, these metalheads. Do you understand? The, the, you, know, you know what I'm going to do? What would that policy be called? The uh... here, here's here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to each town. I'm going to just. I'm going to go. I don't know what I'm listening to, but that was I'm, I'm going to. Here's what I'm going to. I'm going to do stings. I'm going to do sting operations. I'm going to roll into all the cities, and I'm going to say, tonight only, Crocus and Slayer, free concert. And then anyone who shows up, I round them up. Just pour the cement right in. No, we'll talk about it at the break. I what? haul them. I haul them right out of state. I drop them off. Oh, oh. like an old time sheriff, yeah, right on the Nevada That's, border. Oh, Nevada, possibly Oregon and Mexico. Better yet, okay. Mexico. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a uh, quick break. More, more campaign policies after this. Love line. Love line. We'll be right back. Yeah, go. Hit it, bro. My kisser. Ziga, Azzy. My kisser. It's always like it's a kisser. It's always like the time. Wazzy. 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 Yeah. That's, that's going to be my campaign song. Oh, hell yeah. Mm hmm. And I may do, you know what I might, you know, you know what my big joke is going to be? Huh. When I run for governor, yeah, I'm going to do like a, No, no, no. When, uh, remember you go to your school elections, like in junior high, and there'd be some guy be running for assistant treasurer, and he'd always get up there and go, even though I'm running unopposed, I yeah. still need your vote. Even though there's going to be 35 guys running against me, I'm going to start each speech with, even oh. though I'm running unopposed, I still need your vote. That's a slap in the face yeah, to yeah. my other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah. then people will go... And then you go, music, cues, us. <laughs> no, you'll be doing it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then people, people will be going, uh, how about a, de a debate? Are you going to debate? Oh, and no. I'll be going, what, what do you mean? I'm running on a pose. I'm running... I'll just stick to it, yeah. like a madman. Uh -huh. And it'll insult all the other That's people good. that are running. I like the strategy. And enough stupid people think I actually am. And they'll that, just have to vote it. for me. Well, they'll have to, like, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Plus, do they put you on the uh, ballot al 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 alphabetically? Ooh, I don't know. Corolla could be, you know, people are just dumb enough that if there's 25 people on there, Pick the top. they're just going, 
they take the top one. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. like when you're calling a router service, you know, just take AAA, router service. You, you know, you're not going to flip 30 well, you pages. You definitely do before Davis. Yeah. You sure? But not, and before Hold on, hold on, hold on. And before... Uh, Would you shut up? A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Yeah, I'm before Davis. So Huffington, Davis, Schiff, all after you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Huh. Kelsey? Yeah. You're 15? Yeah. Remember I called like sometime last week. My grandma had the one leg amputated. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to tell you guys thank you because it turned out I wasn't pregnant. But the next day I got into counseling mm -hmm. and all right. that stuff for my grandma and everything she did to me. Fabulous. And all that stuff. And Adam, I think you need to run for governor of Oklahoma too. All right. Is there, is there we enough? got some Christian guy wanting to outlaw everything. Well, I'll tell you, a, uh, a, what's the capital of uh, Oklahoma? Oklahoma City. Oklahoma. That's a vote a, for a Adam. It's a hard one. <laughs> that's it. Well, it seemed too obvious. <laughs> a vote for Corolla? Yeah. Sends a, sends a message to the fat cats in Oklahoma City. Yeah. And in yeah. parts of Sacramento and Washington. See, in California, they're tossing out the governor. So that's why uh, okay. there's an opportunity for Corolla to rise from the ashes here. Thank yeah. you. All right. So you're doing good now. Yeah. And I wanted to ask, how's your tarantula? Oh, oh no. bad topic, Kelsey. That's uh, I'm going to have to talk to my publicist to put a good spin on that one. Like oh, there was okay. a fire in the house, and I tried to save the tarantula. Tarantula died of uh, basically neglect oh. and peanut butter. I, I tried to feed it peanut butter last yeah. night. It may have killed. Yeah, it. I listened to that. Yeah, I, I, evidently they're not chunky fans. Oh, you the, gave uh, not even just the smooth, but the chunky. I gave him the chunky. Yeah, what do you think? I got both. I'm what a that, chunky man. What about the weird stuff your mom used to make you eat? Uh, Actually, crow peanuts. Oh, humble pie. Oh, yeah. All right. Quiet well, down, Drew. Thank you, guys. Again. You're doing good, right, Kelsey? Yeah, I'm doing, like, so good. And another thing about my grandma, you know, with the one leg, she's, mm. like, got this crazy idea. She's going to become a skydiver. Mm. She talked to some famous guy that had both legs amputated, mm -hmm. and he's a skydiver, and so yeah. he's, like, going to buy her what a new leg and what all does this he stuff. Land on? People, uh, by the way, what do you got to lose? You know, people go, oh, that's heroic. He's skydiving with no legs. Oh, what do you got to lose? Yeah, he um, got his legs amputated in a skydiving accident. Oh, my God. No, he did. Yeah. All right. Horrible. Yeah, Ooh. but that, that, that's my point. That's what could go wrong. Uh, now it's all gone. Now now what else could happen? I think what you would land on if you didn't have any legs. A uh, sack. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I got like a yes. bean bag. Oh, yes. I can't get off the ground. My sack's so big, bro. That's what I'm talking about. I cannot actually you wanna, be you taken up You want to jump out of a plane. plane and land on your sack? Okay. It would save me if the shoe didn't open. All right. Boing. Monica? That's me. You're 21? I am. Yeah. What's up? Well, my girlfriend and I were going for a drive tonight, and we were talking about oral sex and, you know, manual stimulation and different types of sex, and found out that both of us do not like to have our clit played with mm -hmm. to any extent, to the extent that, like, it hurts. Not we even oral. I want to kick the guy in the nuts when he does it to us. Does that include mm -hmm. oral sex? What was that? Does that include oral sex? Yeah, I mean, like I've never had an orgasm, and the whole quit thing really not working for me. How about during intercourse? Mm, intercourse is getting better. Like I'm finally with somebody who I love and care about. Uh -huh. So I guess maybe that aspect of it makes the whole intercourse thing better. But before let's him, just, let's just stop I and consider. Just Hang on a second. Right. Be bored. Just, just realize yeah. that this does not exist with a, a Y chromosome. Right. There's not a male That's version of Monica. That's the dude chromosome? Yeah. There's mm -hmm. not a male version of Monica on the planet. Guy doesn't like his clit being played with? Doesn't like his... Yeah. Can't... His, his orgasm, well, whatever. It's getting better. We're working on the sex. It just... No. Yeah. That Why, not Monica, you sound sort of angry about the whole thing. You know, I am. I mean, yeah. I've been trying for a while, and it's just kind of defeating. Yeah, well, you're 21. I know, but... And you, you've never, you never had an orgasm on your own? No, I mean, I go to counseling, and she's like, well, you know, you should really try playing with yourself. Buy some right. lube. And it's like my grandma, so I listen to her, and no, nope, nothing. I just get well, so bored, I flip well, on the TV. What are you in counseling for? Um, my family split up while I was in high school, and it's like unresolved issues. Huh? Really? That's yeah. it? No abuse or anything? Then she asks all the time, she's like, are you sure you weren't molested? I'm like, yep, pretty darn sure. Yeah. So, I mean, I've, I've asked around, hey, did anybody molest me? And pretty much everyone said no. No, no hands I know went up. kind of, not like right. they're going to admit it or anything, but. Let's ask a couple of, were you physically abused? 
Um, no, verbally maybe, mentally, yeah, and, for my dad. But and do you do you have feeling when you have sex? I mean, you can feel the intercourse. No, no, see, I've like I've asked my gynecologist and my clinician at Planned Parenthood. I'm like, I have no sensitivity. Like my nipples, I could mm-hmm. pierce them, and mm-hmm. it wouldn't even hurt. Mm-hmm. Well, and that kind of thing, it's suspicious for what we call somatic dissociation. If when you're like very young, you uh-huh. are cause tra- traumatic experiences that include physical pain, uh-huh. oftentimes cause people to disconnect and dissociate from their body. And it makes the ability to sort of um, be able to uh, locate your body in space somewhat abnormal. So you can't, you know, can't. Right. I mean, I thought maybe it was just like I'm not ticklish, I'm not. People can touch me. I don't really squirm or anything. So then when it comes to the sexual side, I just kind of lay there. And I feel bad for these poor boyfriends because I've had, you know, three sexual partners, and they've all been in monogamous long-term relationships. All right. Anyway, it's getting better. I thought maybe it was the Christian factor. Um, Are you you hot? Are you a good-looking chick? I would say I'm probably like an an eight and a half or a nine. Yeah. You sound hot. Not I mean, like. Not sexy hot. You just sound like a pain in the ass. And oh, that's times. rough. Well, it's true. You just no one's told you to shut up enough in life, right? Except for your dad. What happened? Yeah, and he did it too much. Oh. Okay, listen, Monica. Yes. All right, you 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 got anger, baby. I really? can hear it. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, you're angry. You don't know it, but you are. I don't feel angry. You are angry. I can hear it. Maybe maybe it's more frustrated than I. Am. Uh, it's not. I'm it's not. It's, it's not frustrated. I'm it's sexually not, frustrated. No, no, it's not hostility. No, it's not hostility. But it, it's it's it is, and there is some frustration. But yeah, it's an anger, a little yeah. anger toward men, yeah, yeah. and I'm, I imagine that stems from your dad. And you're probably kind of tough on the fellas. And just hearing the way she talks about uh, the guys, her boyfriends, you know, my girlfriend yeah. sitting here with it, me right it, now, and she's like, "Yeah, you're tough on them." Yeah, so. and you're you're a little bit probably a little bit condescending to him and stuff too, and it really does hurt him oh, for no. much. Yes, That's true too. All right, baby doll, but, but, good. And again, this this whole dissociative quality that makes me worry that something did happen to you long, long ago that sort of disconnected you from your body experiences. And it's good that you're in therapy. You keep working out with your boyfriend. I mean, things are on track for her. You know, what's she going to do? All right. She's yeah. working at it. Yeah. But uh, take it take it easy on the guys you're with. Realize they're not uh, they're dad not, and they're not the cause of your problems. They're not causing this, right? They're trying to make it better. Oh, man, are they trying. Yeah. <laughs> and if you could fake one every once in a while, you certainly could... Uh, you know what I mean? Blow a little wind no, in their no. sail. What's Think wrong with that? Think how mad you'll get then. Well, she will get mad. Oh, my God. Uh, Drew, is it hot in here? Yes. They, I, think the, I think the air goes off when the mics are on. I really do. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because every time we sit down, it feels nice. Ten minutes in, it, it's sweltering. Yeah. Can we do something about that? I keep asking. But here's oh. the thing. Is it... How big a problem technically is it to hear some air conditioning when most of the calls cut off for uh, 30 seconds at a time in the middle of the call? <laughs> As doesn't compared that, to, you mean? Doesn't, that, yeah. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't it pale in comparison <laughs> yes, to us not yes. hearing half the goddamn oh, yeah. call? Yes, yes. What's going on with that? I Anyone think, know? You know what? What? I think they're hearing an echo and they're trying to fix it. They're trying to fix it. Yeah. You mean uh, back? We move studios. Yeah. We're in a uh, new studio that... Uh, well, here's the deal. professional studio. I forgot what radio studio was like. Our old studio, Westwood uh, One, which I pray is on fire right now. <laughs> on fire. <laughs> on fire. You know what I really hope? Here's what I hope for that place. You know how when you watch these, uh, watch these action movies, the villain at the end, it's not enough that the villain... The villain can't die of a heart attack no, or get yeah, shot. No, he has to be. He has to be falling off of a cliff, firing an AK-47, and then explode <laughs> That's halfway. Right. That's right. Here's what I'm saying. He has to fall out of the airplane and then go through the jet engine. He gets sucked yeah. into it. That's right. Yeah. Westwood One just burning is not enough for me. No. That's really, it's the equivalent to the supervillain getting shot and falling over slowly, clutching his abdomen. Yeah. I need a piece of meteor to hit that <laughs> building. Do you understand? Uh, like, uh, I don't want to see rubble. I want to see a crater. Mm-hmm. I'd like to go in there. Here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to, wa- I'd like to go over to that Westwood one. I'd like to look down and just see a smoking crater. And then I'd just drop my pants and take a steaming <laughs> load right into it. <laughs> oh, my God. And, and the, the crater would only be filled by my fecal matter. And totally. Over the, and, and completely to- filled. And, <laughs> And and, and over and it would, over the course of six years, uh. depending on how much Mexican I eat, <laughs> between six and nine years, we would fill that crater. That's right. Uh. And then 
and then I would uh, I would take a, a, a plaque that said uh, uh, rest in hell, mm. and I would just stick it right in the middle of my uh, fecal Ste- filled ste- crater. You're steaming. That's right. Yeah. That's what I hope. All you're right, Drew. Load. We got to take a break. So so before we're yeah. in a studio that had no air conditioning. Now we have air conditioning. We just ain't, we, we can't, can't turn can't it appreciate on. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna work this out, and we'll be right back. Love line will be right back. Love line. Hey everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. All right there, Drews. Here we go. Can we get back to the phones? Mm, yes, sir. Speak to uh, Mr. Curtis. Mr. Governor, sir. Hey, Adam. Yeah. What's going on? How you doing there, Curtis? I'm doing good. <laughs> Long time no uh, see, huh? Yeah, it's been a while. What's up, buddy? Oh, I just wanted to say uh, how much I support your campaign for governor. Mm-hmm. Get Maybe those sixty. First time voting get, in California. Just get those sixty signatures for him, and uh, he'll pay up and get yeah. on the ballot. Get on the ballot. That's right. And let me tell you this, Curtis. Vote for me. Is a vote for? Uh, well, it sends a message. What's well, a vote fact. for you? It's a vote for me. It's. Uh, it sends a, f- a message to the fat cats in Washington. You understand? Fat cats. Yeah, that's what I like. That's what I like in a constituency. So let me just repeat the last two words I say. You need to be like uh, Farrakhan, the guys behind you repeating stuff. That's what I want. Yeah, yeah. bunch of guys wearing koofies. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I make I a speech. All right, Curtis. I'll uh, I'll see you at the at the, uh, the at the booth. poll yeah. at the poll. The booth. Polling the booth. Yeah. I'll see you at the booth. Adam. Yeah. Can I be one of your advisors when you are the governor? <laughs> yes, I'll make you my uh, commissioner of hemp. I will repeat the last two words of everything you say. All right, let's see how this works. All right? Okay. Curtis, I need you to hit the streets and spread the word. Spread the word. I need you to let everyone know that there's a new sheriff in town, and he's running for governor. Now, you need to stop more frequently so he can repeat. Yeah. No, he's got, he's yeah. got to repeat the last... Would yeah, you yeah, shut up? More frequently so he can repeat I'm stopping thing. to tell you to yeah. shut up. Right. Go ahead, Curtis. There's a new I'm governor in town. Yeah, okay. I, I, the phone cut out, so I think that was close. Uh, I, I'll, I'll put a, uh, a chicken in every pot, two cars chicken. in every garage, and a hash pipe in every mouth. Hash pipe in every mouth. There you go. Speedier, speedier, Curtis. Yeah, you, you, really, but no yeah. beat. You just, you just come right in, all right? All right. All right. Uh, a vote for Corolla is a vote for Corolla. A vote for Corolla. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, that. this is going to work. You can be my minister of echo. <laughs> I can do that every day. No, you're supposed to say echo. Echo. Ironically. All right, buddy. That's good. Look for me on the bound. That's right. I'm going to clean up this city. Oh, I'm going to put everyone to work. You know, let me tell you the first thing I'm, I'm looking into. Disability. <laughs> Take those slackers. Get them right off that. And you know, start cutting that disability check. Take care of that workers' comp. That's right. Workman's comp, disability, and anyone who's filed. Immediately, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to be like uh, McCarthy was in the uh, 50s. Mm. I'm going to I'm going I'm going on a witch hunt. Rand Coulter uh, says was a great uh, great American. I'm going it's true. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to start looking. I'm going to I'm going to give me a list of everyone who's on disability. Yeah. Everyone who's uh, claimed a uh, wrongful uh, termination lawsuit. Anyone who's uh, filed more than two lawsuits in the last five years. I'm going to get a big, long master list, and then I'm going to start looking into these people. And believe me, I'm going to dig some dirt up about 90% of them. Thank you. All right. These, uh, these leeches. Lorelai? Hey. You're 18? Yeah. I'm going to make that name illegal. Okay. <laughs> It's either going to be Lori or Lindsay, but there will be no Lori lies. Okay. 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 But you'll be able to keep your name through what I call a grandfather rule. Well, she can have it because she's moved to Texas. Oh. Huh? Okay. What? Huh? Well, oh, when okay. you're president, you get rid of it. But yeah. Then. What's the capital of Texas? Austin. Texas City? Austin. Austin? Austin. Austin. Yes. Houston. Houston. No, uh, no Austin. Okay, Austin's Austin. the capital of Texas? Yes, it is. Yeah. All right. Well, let's say a vote for me sends a message to those fat cats in Austin. What's your question, Lorelai? Okay, well, my question is, okay, I'm a virgin, mm-hmm. and whenever I masturbate, the That's only... That's going to be illegal, too. <laughs> Go ahead. 
the after only 18. way I can reach orgasm is if I lie on my stomach. And I was wondering if that'll like affect me whenever I do have sex. No, her. you'll be fine. Do you rub on something on your stomach? Huh? Do you, do you rub against something while you're on your stomach, or? No, because like, it's okay. Like, I have to pull the my dildo out. <laughs> dildo. Yeah. Wow. My sister Still goes. a virgin now. Yes. You a big gal? No. Hmm. No. 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 Mm -hmm. Are you religious? I'm Roman Catholic. Why? Why? Uh, why are you a virgin and? Well, okay. Swinging well, a dildo. I'm waiting mm -hmm. for the right guy, and plus, like, STDs scare the hell out of me. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> Especially okay. when you go to a Catholic school and. Mm -hmm. uh. Meanwhile, she's uh, going to die of toxic shock because the dildo wasn't sterilized. It was wedged up there for yeah. so long. Four feet of it broke off in her. Okay, so you lie in your stomach, use the dildo. No, that's whenever I'm finished with it. And, like, I have to lie on my stomach to get an orgasm. Or at least mm -hmm. I think I'm getting an orgasm. Mm -hmm. all right. okay. That's all right. You'll be fine. And when you Don't say worry. dildo, do you mean vibrator? Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Say vibrator. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's a little more, it's more uh, couth. couth. Yeah, yeah. It's, true. Couth. Jinx. You yeah. owe me a Coke. And let me say this. When I'm in charge, <laughs> that Jinx, owe me a Coke thing that's rarely paid up on, oh, it will be enforced. Law. Yeah. You will have to get that person a Coke if they, in fact, say Jinx. I'm going to need documentation of it. But, uh, what are you know, we do with the, the Jinx owe me a Coke and no one ever gives you a Coke. Yeah, but I know you are, but what am I? How are we going to solve that one? I'll tell you. Well, first off, you shouldn't even be talking until someone says your name. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. We got to go to break. Hi, uh, Baba. Huh? We'll be back. All right, guys. Here's the deal. Dateline. You're looking to hook up, sick of wasting time with the wrong person? Dateline. One call is all you need to make. Call the Dateline. 877-889-DATE. Call the Dateline. Uh, oh, yeah. Everybody now. Everybody. Uh oh. No, oh, it's love line. Oh, we just heard a uh, blood curdling surge in our ears, but we're all right now. Yes, Drew? Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> no, not really. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. All right. Ready to rock here, Drew? Here we go. Speak to uh, Lacey. Lacey? Yes. You're 21? Yeah. Um,. Actually, um, what's going on with me is basically I got involved with somebody about two, I, two and a half years ago, I guess. It would be two and a half to three years ago. Um, anyway, she was 16 and I was 19 at the time. And I'm not sure exactly if I'm doing the right thing because I've only been with guys my whole life. Uh-huh. Well, I'm confused. You're not having it anymore? You are. Well, it's just... I mean, it's cool and everything, but it's just like the interest quiet, is. Quiet, like, quiet. I don't know. I'm Shut up. Work. Shut up. Are you having this relationship now, or this is an old relationship? No, no. This is current, and this is totally current. So you're, I mean, this yes, is going yes, on right you are now. having it now. Yes, yes, you're having it now. Okay, because you start off by saying, like, when I was 19, yeah. I met a girl who was 15. So you've been dating with her for two and a half years. And it continued, right. Yes. And have you been dating? Uh, have you been dating other people during that period as well? Um, no, not really. Basically, so you've been in a um, hang on. You've been in an exclusive okay. relationship with this woman for two and a half years. Right. Exactly. What is confusing? Well, um, when when the whole thing started, um, I lived with my mom, and I just. Basically, I was in a really confusing time. My parents had just gotten in, in a divorce, mm -hmm. and um, they'd been married my whole life. And uh, me and my mom ended up getting this apartment. Well, what happened was um, I met her, like, she lived with her mom in this apartment complex, the same one upstairs. Mm -hmm. And um, so she was more, I, I don't want to say more like that, but it was like she, she you know, kind of, like, I don't know, like, I, I don't know how to even say it. Like, did she, did she victimize like, you? I mean, she's no, older. No. Yeah. 
No way, no way. She just. So what do you say? She she basically um, she showed me that she was interested, and I'd never seen that before. Okay. Okay. Let me. You're calling from Sacramento. Yes. Okay. Because let me tell you this: when you when you when you cast your vote for Corolla, uh-huh. it sent it sends a a message to the fat cats in Sacramento. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, I, right. I realized that. Okay. And <laughs> okay. I'm uh, okay. I'm glad. I'm glad you're aware of that. I am so thoroughly confused. By I, I have no I idea have what spun. I am. What too. is your question? Okay. Okay. What my question is is that okay? So we got involved a long time ago, and oh, then well, that's your what happened now was right at, about three months after I met her, she had moved to San Jose. Well, we had continued the relationship through that, and we had like talked. Mm-hmm. Um, all the time, like constantly, like almost six hours a day, and then like she moved two. down here, <laughs> well, you gotta and in the um, we got to save it for the crater because that's what go. we thought yeah, would be, you know, good or whatever. Yeah. And this is our We're second apartment we have together. We lived together that. for okay, now good. about a couple, you know, a year and a half or whatever, maybe almost uh, two years, and yeah, things have just like gone down the drain. And I just want to know maybe if it's me, maybe if it, you know, maybe I'm not that way, and that's why hold. things are going, like, I'm depressed all the time. I'm going to number two. Small, it's kind of a small bag, but... I can hold. Hmm? I, I'm what? just really depressed all the time over Who is nothing. This? Who is this? Hello? Who is this? This is Lacey. Oh, Lacey. All right. Yeah. You're on Love Line. What's your question? That that was my question. Is the reason is that I, I just feel that I'm like really depressed all the time over our relationship, and I don't know exactly why. You know what I mean? I mean, mm-hmm. so you're right. wondering why? Well, maybe it's not the relationship. Maybe you're just depressed. I'd say you're depressed. Yeah. Why don't you get uh, look into that? A How about bit? look? At what's going on in your life? You're 21. I'm 21. I'm not going to school. Um, I work at this really depressing job that I hate. Mm -hmm. And then I come home and the same events happen every single night. We come home and we watch TV or we come home and we go to the movies. Everything we do. Hold on. I'm getting depressed just thinking about this. Oh, you're depressed. Are you exercising? No. What kind of music do you listen to? (laughs) Beethoven. I I love a lot of, I love 80s. Shostakovich. What? You, You listen to classical music? No. I thought you liked everything. Well, I mean, not classical or country. All right. Well, forget about country. But listen okay. to classical. And walk. No. It makes it, it's like you're in a movie. Instead makes of your life seem like it's in a movie. Instead of sitting on and watching TV, go out and get some exercise. Yeah, but, exercise. But it does sound like you may need some treatment for depression, too. And, uh, and once you are sort of out of your funk, you may be then in a position to make change. It's really hard when you get in that biological state of depression to initiate things. You're, you're, mm-hmm. sort, of, you're sort of paralyzed by it. Let me say this. Let me tell you the best way to... Uh, get out of depression besides therapy which none of our callers can afford or believe in classical music okay classical music walking walking but you know here's what gets you out of depression listen to me everybody living shush doing things you don't want to do that that will that will pull you up from the ashes of depression but that's the hard part when you're depressed it's hard even to get up and brush your teeth that's i i I, I know but it's a way i mean your depression stems from some emotional difficulty but you can almost break the depression down by by sort of powering through it by forcing yourself to do activities you don't want to do and i don't mean i don't mean you don't like liver so you force yourself to eat liver what i mean is is you feel like chain smoking and watching television and instead you exercise and, and, or you yeah. read a book and turn the tv off but you know what you people you feel like eating junk you eat health food you know what they you need, break though? yourself in order to do that they need to have a plan a goal now they really do you need to have something you're looking forward to something. here's the here's the plan be a little hard on yourself. Kick your own ass a little. And I don't mean beat yourself up emotionally. I mean do a bunch of push-ups. Yeah. I mean just start breaking yourself down a little bit. Yeah. Tre- pre- pretend like you know, join it's as if you join the army. He, don't sleep until noon. Or in fact, get up. Do join the army. Or do join the army. <laughs> Stop calling us. No, get up early and exercise. 
I, I know it sounds very rudimentary, no, no, but these people aren't going to read any books and they're not no, going to the you. therapist. It's, it's actually more than rudimentary and it actually stands up to scientific scrutiny, in fact. In some studies, uh, exercise has withstood or done as well as uh, antidepressant medicines, but... That's why you're going to be my surgeon general. Yeah, well, I, you, lieutenant and surgeon general. Right. And the problem, though, is... And enforcer. Again, realistically, this is that unrealistic thing people have in our culture, which is you need to choose to blah, blah, blah. Right. Well, sometimes your brain won't do that. You just can't. Yeah. And if you really can't, then you got to get some treatment. You've got to. Because then you'll, you'll, they'll pull you out of the biological slump and you're in a position then to start doing things. Then you won't need the medicine anymore. David? Uh, yeah, hello. You're 17? Yeah. What's up? Um... I was just wondering because I was with my girlfriend for about um, three months now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm with my girlfriend, and we recently had sex for the first time, mm -hmm. and she didn't bleed, mm -hmm. and the quote unquote cherry didn't pop, and mm -hmm. she was jumping up and down like she's done it before, and she claimed mm -hmm. she's a virgin, and we're very, we're very honest with each other, and she mm -hmm. claimed she's a virgin. I told this to my other friends who were women, and they're like, bro, you know, the first time it happened, you know, you're lucky to even get all the way in there, let alone jump on top. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's true. I don't know. True, How, old bro. Is she? How old is she? She's been whoring. Your women friends call you bro? Yeah, it's, it's wow. a little weird like that. that sounds Whatever, bad. that's like, uh, that's a rub. I'm just, because oh, I see. she okay. claims to be, very, like, our relationship is very, very honest. And well, then, mm -hmm. then, then if it's honest, why can't you trust her? Yeah. So I, I, can um, see it's, I can see it's built, very honest, built, built on trust. a foundation of honesty in, and trust. In, intense trust, yes. I, yeah. uh, believe it or not, I did trust. I didn't even realize that. I didn't even come to my mind until I was discussing it. And no. like, why, so you, why are you talking? Why are you talking to your girlfriends? And by the way, girl, uh, your girlfriends hate all girls, including your yeah, your I, girlfriend. I understand this, but they obviously know more information about their organ than I do. No, relax. No, <laughs> no they strangely don't. enough, they don't because each one is different. They all assume that it's all like them, and everyone else is lying. See, the only question I had for you guys today is that. If can she be that loose from let's say one or two years of just you know finger or um, from a finger or what do you mean what do you mean that loose what does that mean like not she wasn't loose but not not she didn't experience pain or wasn't as okay. tight as everyone that's else fine. Like, seemed to be. that's fine hmm. that's fine yeah maybe uh, it doesn't mean anything maybe you're a little a little more slender downstairs than you'd anticipated. Or that no, she no, anticipated. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Hold on, let me talk to one of my bros. Hold on, I'm talking to bro. Hey, bro. Yeah, bro. This uh, this chick, David's girl. Yeah. Virgin, didn't seem to experience much pain when he was in her. What oh, do you think, dude? Small penis. Dude. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's obvious. But hold on. Hey, Dave. Yeah. Okay. Look. Uh, talk to one of my bros. Hello. Yeah. 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 Said you were small. That, I'm actually. I'm. I'm not like embellishing. I'm actually very confident in that area. I know that's not the problem. Okay. I, well, I know that well, for a fact that's not the problem, but... Well, you're very... You're a confident guy who's in a relationship that's built on a bedrock of trust. So perfect. What are you worrying about? No, I'm just, I was simply just asking if... You, know, you don't see the irony in that, dude. Yeah, yeah, I do see the irony in that, but... All right, but listen, David. Stop. Okay, here's the thing. You're, you're well on your way to being a dick in life. All right. I'm, I'm just being honest with you. This yeah. is what dicky guys do. And let me explain what dicky guys do. They don't know they're dicks. That's yeah. what makes them bigger dicks. Right. You got a girlfriend... She's a virgin. She says she was a virgin. You guys are honest. Don't start picking on her. It's Everyone's not different. I'm talking about the biology. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, everyone is different. Some people experience pain. Some people don't. She enjoyed herself her first time around. Why well, is that? Why don't you count you your blessings? Yeah. All right. Uh, just one more question. Is that is it true that... No. <laughs> How do you explain what that is? Uh, I think understand. it's one of those weird nationality things. David, what's your nationality? Um, I'm national. I'm actually um, Jewish slash Irish. Oh, really? Yeah. You should like chicks more. There's right. no excuse now. I All thought right. it was one of those cultural things where you're from one of those Middle Eastern countries. They hate women. But you should be nicer. All right, cool. All right. All right, take care. Good times. But, but <laughs> I, I, I don't think everyone... I, I think I know what you mean by being a dick. Yeah. Describe that guy. I don't mean to me. These, no, I know what you mean. No, there, there's two types of dicks. There's sort of overt dickitude. The guys who just walk around saying, you know, trying to get under people's skin and right. doing. And then there are guys who sort of think like a dick, which is they take a negative, they take, they take a negative path in keep, their thinking. And they keep going down. And they're not going to let the facts or the advice of so-called experts or anybody else get in their way. So what they do is they take a situation... 
And they do this with women. And mm-hmm. young men do this with women. Mm-hmm. I used to do this when I was uh, 18 years old, uh, maybe 18 to 31. They do a thing where they go, they have an experience. Like all, 34. They, they're, they're, here's what's going on. They are with a virgin. And then all of a sudden, they're so pure. And all of a sudden, they're not virgins. And now I got to start picking on them. They're building and a case. I'm building a case. So yeah. what's wrong? So they start thinking. And then once they start building a case, hey, whatever, if you're stupid... And most 17-year-old guys are pretty dumb. You'll make a case for anything. You, you'll, you'll, you'll see a face on the moon, and you'll swear it's there. You know what I mean? So you start going around, you start asking other people, and you only ask people. You, you, you don't ask people that are going to disagree with you. And yeah. before you know it, you're going down a path, and now you're angry, and now you've gotten a situation where your loving virgin girlfriend, who you have all, you know, who have a very open, trusting relationship with, is uh, now all of a sudden some kind of whore has been uh, kicked around town. Yeah. yeah, and that's what a dicky guy does. And then what you do, the other second part of being a dick is you keep arguing all the time. Told you what's going on, but you got to you keep you just keep pushing on that path. It's also highly sort of in, intellectualized and yes, it's, it, yeah, it's, yes, uh, and you think you're smart, but you're borderline retard. Yeah. So just humble yourself a little bit. You don't know anything. Thank you, Kevin. Yes, you're twenty. I am. You know, everyone, knows, everyone tells me, stop picking on the callers. But our callers are such dicks. I know, we are. What, can what, I, what am I supposed to do? Send a message to the fat dicks in Washington. That's what I'm, that's what I'm going to do. A, a vote for Corolla will send that. Okay. Go ahead. All right, all right. Uh, every time I finger my girlfriend, uh, right before she's about to uh, climax, she pulls me away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it becomes a little uh, overwhelming for her. Does she act, does she actually have an orgasm? Uh, yeah, she, well, uh, that's another question that I had. Is there a difference between coming for a girl and having an orgasm, or are they basically the same thing? Or do you have a different do you, same it, thing? Do, do two different things happen to you? Oh, don't be a dick. <laughs> no, I'm wondering. No, you're a dick. That's not being a dick. It's yes, like, it is. You're not wondering nothing. Or anything, or well, something. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. Before I was able to come when I was like nine years old and I used to masturbate, I'd have an orgasm, but nothing would come out. Right. Was that, was that Touche, a, Drew. Was that a different experience than when it does stuff does come out? No, no, no. But hey, okay. that's, I don't that's know. I don't point. have a, a vagina, you know. Not yet, you don't. Not yet. But when I'm voted in. Uh-oh. Oh, yes. Well, it's because you're cementing all the real we're, ones. We're going to swap them. <laughs> yes. I'm going to cement o- in all the real vaginas, and we're going to have to create uh, false ones on eunuch uh, unic men. You may be one of them, Kevin. All right, so listen. She... I I think that when you're uh, diddling her and she's about she's about to have her orgasm, it becomes overwhelming. It becomes too intense, and she has to has to stop. Well, you know, what? This, and this, here's yes. the topper. She tells mm-hmm. me when she tells she told me afterward when she tells me to stop, mm-hmm. not to stop. Oh. But I don't want to end up with like some sort of Kobe thing where where I, oh, I go for very her. interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. And and then you know I I, I don't yeah, want to get she, accused she, of rape. Well, right. You, you know, have to right. you have to you know record I mean? her telling you not to stop when you're like you know, uh, she has to sign a paper. Eating. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask you another question too? Mm. Um, she was she's been having like uh, sickness in the morning lately. Uh, but she's on the pill and she just had her period. How long after a period can a can a girl? I mean, I, I know the the cycle stops when she's pregnant. Could she still be pregnant? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's but not on the pill. Not it's probably. very unlikely. And on the pill, she's and taking she the pill. Switch. She was on like uh, she was on the twenty eight day thing. Now she's on ortho. Well, maybe that's Backlund. what's making her sick. Yeah, that's that's what it is. That's what it is. Okay. It's the change uh, in the pill. Number three. <laughs> oh, oh, wait a minute. Guys, what do you what do you think? The Kevin show? <laughs> no, 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 okay, no. Okay, no, hurry. No. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. It's hard to get through, and I have so All many right. questions. I don't go have ahead. access to the internet. You guys are great. You really are. Kiss ass. Good. Okay. Okay, um, fuck I f- Oh, that'll mm. keep you on the air. That's good. Mm. Nice. The F bomb. Jesus Christ. I, I, I don't know. I don't know whether to be insulted or to be feel good about the way people let those F and S words slip. Like they're so comfortable with us, they just like drop those bombs as though they were talking to their buddies. Yeah. Or are they so disrespectful? Well, I think it's like when. You know, that's the same excuse I use when I break wind in front of my wife. Mm. That I'm, you know, I'm so comfortable around you. Doesn't make her feel any better, though, does it? No, she's still insulted. My wife's always like, "Do you have to point your ass toward me? Do you have to fan the?" (laughs) She doesn't like when I point it toward her. It's like, (laughs) listen, it's not a, it's not a gun. If it's gonna stink, it's gonna stink. I turn my ass. 
25 degrees the other direction. It's still, you're still going to get it. That's my me. point. Do you have to point it at me? <laughs> I'd be a good wife for you. I don't know. What. Yeah, her two, her, her, her two biggest wife. arguments are, do you have to point it at me? That's one. And I'm eating. That's her other... Uh, God, Adam, we could do a new Odd Couple movie. And my, and my thing is like, I'm yeah. supposed to stop farting just because you're eating? I do it once in a while to check to see if I still can. My thing, her thing is like, I'm eating. And I'm like, I'm farting. <laughs> How dare you eat while I fart? No respect. Do, 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 do. All right. Coming on to me. Ashley? Yeah? Hold on. Drew, we got we to gotta get in a gay relationship. Let me explain how this would work. How dare you get but, in? Continue. I mean, go, go public. Go public with our relationship. We would have first off. We combine our two incomes. Ooh, nice. We combine it, and uh, none what of this. My kids, dead weight, mm. dead weight. Well, I'll send them off to military academy or something. Well, I'm not paying for it. We're combining our income. Not that expensive. I'm not going to have any of your income go toward them either. Now, if one of them can invent something. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what. You're a doctor. We'll fake an accident. We'll get a lawsuit. We'll get a fat settlement for one of the kids. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Set the kids up. Send them off to Switzerland to some Social sort of a military school, school okay, or something like okay. that. We lose the wives. We move in. Now, I'm taking care of the house. I'm oh, working on the place. <sighs> Utopia. I'm doing everything. You're at work all day. Mm -hmm. You, uh, I mean, I mean, we go, we're, we're tell, seeing. Tell me how it's going to be when I get home. What am I going to walk into? Mart, you're going to walk into a, basically it, it's going to it's going to be martinis and foot rubs. A palace too, right? You have the place just palatial estate and a, and no, not to be not to be big, but I mean you'll have it just squeaky a pointed, clean. A pointed, yeah, it's going to be shining like yeah, a new dime, yeah, yeah. and you're going to sit down, and I'm going to say, oh, take, oh, you must have had a horrible, oh, honey, I'm gonna, honey, honey, and I'm rub your feet, uh -huh. and I'm going to pour you a little brandy, and you're going to be you know, drinking out of a snifter, and start a fire. Honey. You know what I'm saying? Couldn't, put, would we have like? Uh, couldn't we have escorts there to help with the massages and stuff? We'll we'll, we'll have a staff. Yeah, right. yeah. and uh, I'll I'll put on some like Verde and you know, like a little opera going. You're just gonna relax, and I'm gonna say like, uh, did, now uh, Wall Street uh, Journal, USA Today, uh, New York Times. What do you like, Honey Utney Reader, honey? And then uh, it, it's gonna be it's like a, like first class. Oh, there's gonna be reclining. It's gonna be great. Reach arounds. Oh, it's gonna be huge. Oh. What do you get? I get the satisfaction of knowing my man is happy. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley? Yes? Wish some of you broads would hear that. <laughs> huh? <laughs> You're 19. What's going on? Um, okay, so I have this really strange thing that I'm just curious about. Um, I can, like, you know, like the fire poles and playgrounds, like mm -hmm. that kind of thing? If, um, mm -hmm. if I hold myself up and, like, suspend... With like my legs just out in the air, like clenched for like thirty seconds, I can orgasm. All right, such a talent. You got to You got to get one of those, then, right? <laughs> yeah, right. If I could install one in my room, I would. Um, mm. But I'm just wondering, like, have you ever heard of that before, or like, how does that physiologically work? Well, is there no movement, or, and you just have pressure against your vagina? No pressure against my vagina. It's all clenching. Clenching your legs. Yeah. yeah but where's the pole? Is it a pole between your legs? Like, there doesn't even have to be a pole below me. It could be like a pull-up pole. So she just she's pulling her abdo lower abdominal muscles in, basically, yeah. with her legs straight up. Oh, oh like, you mean you mean yeah. hanging, hanging and lifting? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, but like, if like I lay down and clench my muscles, it doesn't work. When you when you lie down and do it? Yeah, it's, I have to hold up all yeah, my body weight. You have to be able to really get all the way very, very deep in the abdom lower abdominal musculature to be able to do that. And mo many people get nothing from that, but some women are talented. Women can do... <laughs> the, the spectrum of what women will <laughs> orgasm in response to is extremely yeah. varied. But right. ha have you ever heard of this before? Yes. I've heard of guys doing this, too. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. It was yeah, rough you're in fine. gym class. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> now, you if you have an orgasm, do you have to react? I mean... What do you mean? Can you hide it? Oh, no. I, yeah, I can hide it. But it's okay. just a little weird to orgasm in front of your entire gym, gym class. Yeah. I'd be all right with it if I could get away with it. Okay. So you know it's, what all, I mean? it's all pretty much like your muscles clenching, the same yeah, yeah, contractions. Yeah. Okay. Right, right. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, good times. Yep. <laughs> all right. She's happy. Yeah, she's like, yeah, is it? Whoa. All right. Uh, listen, we got to take a break. I'm going to uh, draw Drew a hot bath. Oh, my God. Have you ever had a straight edge shave, Drew? Do you know the... Is, uh, that, is that a euphemism for something? No, and it's actually, I actually take the oh, strap yeah. out, what? lather I, it up. I, 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 I could take the strap on out. 
No, I take the strap out. Yeah, yeah. Sharpen the blade. Oh, nice. Never, straight edge. Never hot heard. lather. Oh, oh nothing lather. like it. You lie I mean, down. Everything has a double. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a nice hot lather. You lie down, and I wrap the towel around. It's only, oh. the, only your cigar sticking out yes, of it yes. as, you, as you lay back, yes. right? Right. And then, no, but you know what? I, seriously, I like to go to a barber and get a straight edge. I like to get a real shave. Sure. I like to go to a barber and get a where they, they put the hot towels yeah, yeah. on your face. And they get, Have you had that? They get, no. Get the hot lather. You we know, could get the do hot that together and hold hands the whole time. Oh, all right. What a utopia. We'll be back. Hello. This is your radio. Radio. Love line. We'll be right back. Love, love line. Love line. With Adam Cole and Dr. Drew. On 105. Alternative. From San Francisco. Hey, yo, it's Loveline. <clears throat> I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. All right. Let's uh, get back to the phones and uh, speak to Josh, who's 20. Oh. Josh? Mm. You don't want yeah. to talk to Josh? All right, we will. All right. What's up? Uh, yeah, I flipped candy this weekend, and I've had a really bad migraine for the last four days now, I guess. Is that slipping or flipping? Flip. Slip. And that's yeah, uh, it's Coke, Coke and, and ecstasy. Those candy flipping. That's what I thought that, it was too. Or candy flipping, yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right, didn't I say that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else? Just headache. Yeah, just my. It feels like a concussion almost. What do you do? You 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 take? How do you do it? You snort uh, everything. I I snorted some Coke and then I did some ecstasy and then I snorted some more Coke. Was it a big dose of ecstasy? Uh, no, it was just uh, it was just one cap. Uh, it was yeah, a single did, hit. Did you have any sort of unusual reaction when you were high? No, not really. I mean, I didn't feel the ecstasy as much as I normally do. But how much is the coke these days? Uh, I, did, I got like an eight ball for like a hundred. Eight ball for a hundred? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <I> just, <laughs> Wait a minute, is that like three and a half grams? Mm, yeah, I think so. Something like that. So uh, you paid like uh, thirty bucks a gram or uh, twenty eight bucks a gram? Yeah, but he threw in ecstasy for free. So wow, coke is so cheap now. Well, listen, when I'm uh, elected governor, <laughs> uh, eight balls, uh, eight balls will be uh, one hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> One of my policies, yeah. Cocaine price controls? I mean, really, is is, is Coke, is, I mean, eight balls is a little cheaper, but is Coke 30, 30 bucks a gram? That's how much I got it for. Wow. <clears throat> I'll tell you. The kids today, Drew. I don't yeah, do so a good, lot of they? Coke. I haven't bought a lot of how that. Many days, how, when was this that you did this? Four days uh, ago? Last weekend. Last weekend. And headache ever since. And it's a global headache. Yeah. It's, through a, it's not one yeah, side or the other. Yeah, it's mostly like in the back of my neck and in the front yeah. of my head. All right. Does it get into low back at all? Go back. Um, my back sore. My whole body's really sore because I did it all weekend. But oh, you did multiple times. Well, I did coke most, coke multiple times. But anything else you're doing besides cocaine? Uh, just Speed. coke and ecstasy. That's it. No, no pot, alcohol. Uh, pot. Yeah, off and on. Doing any other? What's the pills you're shaking? What was that? Sounds like you're shaking a bottle of pills. Uh, I did coke a little bit ago. <laughs> Josh, sounds like you're uh, well on your way to hell here. Yeah, the cocaine, yeah. the co daily. You, you, it wasn't that you did cocaine four days ago, as you added ecstasy four days ago to the cocaine. So you're, yeah, you're strung, you're, you're strung out on coke. So that's where the headache's coming from. And it could be your sinuses, could be a lot of different things, but it's the cocaine. So it could what be do you, just because if I don't do it, nah, or whatever, just because I've done it all weekend and I'm kind of like strung out, I guess. So yeah, you're, uh, you're hung over. Yeah, yeah you're strung yeah. out. What do you? Uh, where do you get your money? I work. I have a well, you, pretty good job. Yeah, yeah good job? Yeah. What do you do? It's okay. Collect. I'm a collector. <laughs> really? You collect drugs? Uh, no, money from bills and crap. <laughs> I see. All right. Hey, Josh. Wow. Maybe yeah. you might want to look into your uh, cocaine use. Yeah, you just yeah. need treatment, Josh. And uh, this kind of thing actually was kind of we'd recommend you have treated in a hospital. I know it's hard to get that these days for cocaine, but... Uh, yeah. Really? You're, yeah, cocaine, they don't like to you treat. Can't, you can't stop doing coke? I can stop. I just... Just don't want to. I don't know. I just have it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, see, I can stop. Just well, not now, stopping. Now you, now you have a headache. You've had bad experience. Why don't you just stop then if you can stop? Yeah. 
The staying stop from cocaine is really hard, and if the first week or so is streamability and irritability. How, yeah, how, I guess I, it does kind of seem hard to find one it right now, you know, I guess. But. Yeah, go get, get treatment, right? It, it's, okay. Again, insurance companies don't like paying for inpatient treatment for cocaine because they say there's no detox. But if you don't put people like this in a structured environment, they don't stop. So people don't detox from coke, so they're not going to put them in a hospital. But if you don't put them in a hospital, they're they never going to quit. Right. Which, doesn't that end up costing the insurance company more over the t course of time because the people Adam, have to relapse? When you're governor, we're going to have a long talk about this. Oh. It's one of the biggest travesties out there. Really? All right. Yeah. I'm going to give money. All right. I, I got a lot of plans. We got, you got to go for this governorship. We, we need it. And here's it's time. You've been talking about this for years. It's, consensu it's time to, it's time to consensual crimes, legal, by the yeah, way. Yeah. And all the prostitution, all that stuff, no problem. Knock yourselves out. We're, here's what we're doing. Taking all the cops... Violent crime. Even white-collar crime. Go ahead. You want to skim some money at work? Go right ahead. Marjorie? Yes? You're 21? Yeah. What's up? Um, well, I don't know. Like, for the past three years, I've been, like, I don't know, trying to experiment with intimacy and everything. But I, like, never get turned on. Even if the guy's, like, really turned on, I'm just not. Are you on any medication? No. So, not so sexual. It's just you don't really like sex. Well, I would imagine that I would. I'm a like very passionate person, and I don't. Drew's a man of exquisite passion himself. Perhaps you two should get together. Does anything anything turn you on? Yeah. Um, just not when you're with a person. Yeah, just not when I'm with a guy. Mm -hmm. Well, what kinds of things get you aroused? I don't know. It'll be like unintentional things, like. Um, I don't know, like, you know how you see the intimate parts of a movie, that'll do it, or just have a really vivid imagination, sometimes that'll do it, but when I'm with a guy, it just... Have I, you I, just not I been in love? You've yeah. not been in love with a guy? Am I in love? No. You, have you ever been? No. I think that may be the miss... Oh. oh. <laughs> do I, have to, I, don't, I shouldn't have to be... I didn't think hold I on a second. I mean, hold on, hold on, Marjorie, okay. hold on. Smoke detector battery went off in the background. I have it clocked in at about uh, 108, 109. Okay. So we should be looking for that 53. thing to go off. Was every 35? They're, they're about somewhere between 35 and 55 seconds. So around 43, she's got to be quiet again. Okay. She lives in L.A. Can't, can't. It sounds like her phone's right next to it, too. Here we go. I can't really hear you. Okay, just be quiet for a second. Okay. Hold on. There no, we go. Okay, that was at forty-seven. Okay, hold on. Let me let me let me oh, triangulate what, here. What room are you in? Forty-seven off there. My bedroom. Your bedroom. Yeah. She okay. sleeps with this, Adam. I want you to think about that. All right. She, oh, she, <laughs> when I'm in charge, but, Marjorie. Yeah, be be, <laughs> be sympathetic. She can't get aroused. The engine isn't running. Mm -hmm. She probably doesn't even hear this. Seven is uh, thirteen seconds, so we're probably coming in about uh, twenty-five. For the next go around. Fresh, uh, I think it's about eighteen. So hold on here. All right, hold on, Marjorie. Marjorie, be okay. quiet for one minute, okay? Okay. Okay. Here we go. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah, say 20. 23. That's 23. <sighs> 23, so hold on. I had it at uh, 47. I went off at... It's going to be uh, 50. 20, well, hold on. What's 23 and 47? Uh, 23 and 47. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Less. What's 13 and uh, 23? 36. 36? We passed that. It's going to be about 56. No, it's coming. Okay, quiet. That was at 36. Now, 30. Here we go, 50. 59. 54. 59. Oh, 59, you son of a bitch. What I told you. At? I'm seeing 56. I'm looking at the uh, clock right oh, I'm there. I'm looking at this one up here. We're looking at two different clocks. We're off by a few seconds. Okay. We, right. True. This is an outrage. What did I say? What 39 seconds? What do I want? Why don't you question Marjorie a little bit about her uh, living environment? <laughs> okay. But how many seconds did I have? 39 on the extrapolation there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So are we going off on, on 38 here? Yeah. Uh, we're looking at the clock. We're uh, trying to time the smoke detector if anyone's just tuned in. All right. Uh, five. Oh. Okay. 30, so it's 35. It's 35. 35? Yeah. 36, 36, 36, 36 seconds. 36 seconds. Oh, that's what I said the first yes, time. Yes, yes, you did. All right. 36 seconds. Now, Marjorie. Yes. Yeah. That, uh, when did it go off on the uh, last uh, one? By 35. The way? I went off on 35. 
All right, so uh, 411 yeah. should do it. Okay, you uh, live in a room that has a smoke detector that goes off every 36 seconds. Right? Okay. okay. Yeah. Are you in your bedroom right now? Yeah. Okay, just, just for a second, listen to the ambient noise in your room right now. Mm-hmm. Do you hear that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Now, how long has that been going off that way? For quite a while, but I just get used to it, so I don't really hear it anymore. All right. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you understand that would drive an iguana nuts if it was in a so you want me cage to in another room? No, no, no. That's what killed your trash. No, oh. no. No, now where, where is your bed in relation to the smoke detector? Um, like two feet from right underneath it. <sighs> and and this, has been, uh, this has been happening for weeks now, yes? Months. Yeah, for like... Oh, there it is. Yeah, for like a year. <gasps> Oh, really? A wow. year? But that is a I, yeah. record of some time. Hold on. Let me talk to Drew for a second. Wow. I am impressed. First off, how low can the battery go that it can give the low battery detection for four years? Uh, couldn't one argue that that's not a low battery? Uh, yes, one could. I mean, it's like, you know, your cell phone does that low that low yeah, battery chirp. tick? Yeah, chirp. Yeah, what, if that went, what, what if you were able to talk for six hours with that chirp going off? Okay, but uh, maybe. No, I was going to say maybe hers is hardwired somehow, but it no, couldn't no, be. No, 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 no. But, but, but uh, just okay. All right, <laughs> Marjorie. Yes. You know what a nine volt battery is? Yeah. You're going to need to replace the battery that's in. You know, people die uh, every day. <laughs> Thankfully, it's. Hold on, let me talk to Drew for a second. No, I want to hear it go on. Thankfully, in a um, sort of a Darwinian way, it's the people that don't replace the battery and the smoke detector end up dying so it sort of eh, it kind of takes care of itself if you're an atheist and in Darwinism like I am so no big loss but uh, we like Marjorie and uh, we would we would like you to replace that 9 volt battery with uh, a new one alright I'll do it this weekend oh uh, please and you know how you can tell if it's got juice in it you put it on your tongue mm. yeah mm -hmm. I don't want to do that okay so you gotta fall in love Marjorie yeah you, you do. need a guy you like and we, we've known, we've, that's been our experience with not every but many women that for, in order to hook up with their sexuality, they need to be having an experience of sort of genuine intimacy, really. I don't, I just, I don't fall for guys like that. I mean, you know, I care for them, but I just can't really, I don't know, like. Mm -hmm. we, we get that. We get you're having trouble with intimacy, but that seems to be the missing ingredient here, we suspect. To fall in love. Yeah, we suspect that. All right. So, don't beat yourself up. Don't rush yourself. Don't freak yourself out. Just uh, find a guy, get in a good, steady, monogamous relationship, mm -hmm. and you'll find your orgasm. Okay. All right? Okay. All right, now don't hang up yet. Okay. Five, four, three, two, <laughs> Ooh, good job. one. Thank you. All right. Now, th th this one is of our greatest pastimes. My, it's my greatest love in this show is timing people's low battery. Do we ever miss them? Though? We hear them. They could be three blocks away. We hear it. Uh, imagine sleeping in a room with that over your head, chirping. I mean, that was through the phone, and it was very audible. Uh, yeah, distracting. But it's it's interesting how different the range of human brain function is. Yes, she she has the capacity. Some brain, no brain. No. <laughs> yes, she has the capacity to screen things out, and you have no capacity to screen thing out. I mean, yes. and, and I don't know that I can put a judgment or qual, you know qualify but one or the other. If I could, you'd be first on the list of things screened out. No, I understand that. Okay, but you know what I mean. That some people can screen everything and then focus. Yeah. It helps you focus when you can screen stuff out. Yeah, it does. Fo focus on watching soaps. Well, and not everyone's focusing on the right things. But, All right. But your thing is, you, you, you know, like you said, a flea farts. And you're, you're, no, but I think that's what makes me a genius. Yeah, that's Thank what makes you. you. And you know what it is? It makes, it makes you see all changes in the environment you know what i mean things that are inconsistent the rest of us sort of screen out you see it and it bothers you yes everything bothers me yeah but, but i am amused by the smoke detector all right, all right we're going to take a uh, i have no idea what marjorie's question was i just had to time and then it becomes very important to me that i'm able to time the chirp and, the, and that was 36 seconds the average 
runs over 30 and about under 45 or 50. Uh, 50 the yeah. average out of chirp. 35 to 50 is really the range. Average chirp is a somewhere in the mid 40s or low 40s. Would you say, Drew? Actually, I think I think there's sort of two clusters. One is around 50 and one's around 35. Yeah. So her her chirp is going off. Let me just do some crazy <laughs> math here. How many times a day? Her chirp is going off approximately two times a minute. Okay. 120 times an hour. Well, it's a little bit less. Let's just so say let's, 100 times an hour. Let's just let's be forgiving because it's more than 100, ti- yeah. 100 times just an hour. Just a round down. 100 times an hour. So it goes off about 800 times in her average sleep. 2,400 times a day. <laughs> yeah, but she's not in a room 24 hours a day. 800 times while she's there. That's right. All right. We'll be back. If you need help, hang up and then dive, dive. Love line. 1-800-LOVE-191. Love line will be right back. Beyond AM, Beyond FM, XM Satellite Radio. Available at local electronic stores and GM dealers. Hey, yo, Loveline, I'm Adam. This is Dr. Drew. Hi, huh? Ready to rock here, Drew? Uh-huh. Yeah. Let's talk to, uh, yeah. Yeah, Ryan? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey. You don't mind if I call you Rhino, do you, buddy? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. What's up? Well, um, I live in San Diego, California, right? And, uh, I met this great, I mean, absolutely great-looking chick, like, a couple weeks ago. And, uh... Oh, oh well, I'm sorry, go. sorry about the... <laughs> but anyways, um... We've been <laughs> talking about sex. And I, oh, my God. You can't... Oh, my God. Ryan uh, said the S word two times in the uh, course of a... Apologize and just let it fly again. That's why Anderson hangs up on these guys. They, they yeah. don't have the, the... They're not trustworthy at that point. It's True. Kind of like, is it is it trustworthy or is it diminished mental capacity? Well, that's the point. They, they can't be trusted to contain their impulses. Right. They but, but can a dog contain its impulse to sniff another dog's ass? No, you can't trust it not to. It will. Yeah. yeah. It's not I, 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 trust I, in the sense that we have to, you know, have a, yeah. you know, a tertiary kind of relationship. Do, do you do you think we've uh, do you think this nation has become a group of tards? Really, I, I really think people are just getting stupid. Or okay, here's what I think. I think there's a greater chasm between. It used to be poor people and people that weren't w- well educated, and all these people seem to still have a little better grasp on the English language and yeah, still you know were able yeah. to uh, con- contain yeah, themselves right. a little there's, bit better. There's two and, things, yeah. There's two things. Is that like our, bums our, used to wear suits? Right. Our educational system is, has Thank failed you. many people, and they can't. They just seem to know nothing. And they come from traumatic histories where they're chaotic and can't contain anything. Yeah. So it's it's a dual whammy sort of right now. Maybe it's uh, yeah. It I, I don't I don't blame the educational system because I'm a product of that system and idiots are still idiots and it doesn't matter how much schooling you give them. Thank you, Kimberly. Yes. You're 25. Yes. What's up? Well, I've been dating a guy for five years. Um, I feel it's time for either a commitment or leaving him. I'm not sexually attracted to him anymore, and he's become really lazy. Why would you want a com- Why would you want a commitment from a guy you don't like and are not attracted to? Because I put five years into the relationship. Oh, you better throw in some more. Yeah, flush some more years down the toilet. That's a smart move. Yeah. I apply that logic to anything, like a job, horrible dead end job with a boss you don't like, where you're going nowhere. So you've you got four years with that crappy company. Better uh, keep going. Better I've already keep, got four better, years in. Better keep it going. Hope, hope, God willing, I'll make it to 20 years? No. Of, mis- of misery? It, no. It's just a matter of how to do it. Uh, Why? You don't... It, first off, you sound angry at this guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, kind of. All right. Kinda. So <laughs> why not... Uh, doing it's easy. That's easy. You're probably going to enjoy it. Yeah. Well, that's that, what everybody no, no, no. Said. She's a, she's codependent. That's why she's hung in this long. Mm. It's very hard for her to end the leave. Oh, so are you worried about his feelings in the breakup or your feelings? Mm, more his. She's responsible for his feelings. Right. And well-being. What's this guy do for a living? Uh, he just started a job as a truck, working for a trucking industry. Okay. And you're angry, baby. 
Yeah. You always been angry, or you just sort of bitter be because too, of this guy? He also lives in Riverside. You'd be angry. Oh, yeah. you live in Riverside? Yeah. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> when you're governor. Yeah. Uh, here's uh here's uh let me tell you one of my one of my first uh, mandates when uh, when I'm governor. Ah, hold on a second. Drew, I'm glad you brought this up. It's unfair to people who are relocating from out of state to give these false names, like Hawaiian Gardens yeah. being a dump. Oh, you change all that. Panorama City. Yeah. No view in Panorama Riverside. City. Riverside. You, you, these you places could, you, sound you, nice. You could irrigate Riverside. Well, that's the yeah. thing. You could bring Listen, life to Riverside. Here, here's what I'm going to say. Listen, you uh, sun-blasted uh, white trash meth heads. You got six goddamn months to dig a river. Or you got, or you got, or change your name to Crapside. Yeah, either either you make your city what your that's the name right. Flex Hawaiian or Gardens. Change your name. I better hear some luau music. I better get a lay when I enter your city. I want to see some palm trees. Yeah. I want to I want to see like uh, I want to I want it to look like an Elvis movie over here yeah. because uh, the nudie bar and the place that uh, the uh, landfill. No, no, not good. You're gone. We'll give you named your landfill cra- gardens. Yes, whatever whatever the most humiliating name is, that's what you're gonna get. Panorama City. That Panorama City is a dump. And when I think Panorama City, I think oh, must have, must have magnificent views of the Pacific they must Ocean. Change into dump no. city. Here's what you look at. You get to look at Kaiser, crappy hospital over there. You get nothing. All right, changing all these names. And by the way, also I'm going to reward some of the nicer places. People that look like. Yeah, it's like. Um, Encino? That doesn't sound as nice as it as it is. Well, anybody that has called a, something nicer, an Indian name or Mexican name. Greatberg. Yeah, get, S- <laughs> Sierra right. Madre. Yeah, dude, don't don't screw me up. Oh yes, I'm going to get rid of all the uh, Spanish surnames really? for everything. Absolutely. Just, just, just ab- make all Spanish surnames, everything. No, no, no. Come it's on. too it's too it's too enticing to the people on the other side of the border. They get confused because here's the deal: you live you live in Tijuana, right? Yeah. Uh, here's what we're telling you. Do not hop over the border and go to Chula Vista <laughs> and then uh, into San Diego and then into Santa Barbara Santa and then Anna. and then and then through Santa Ana and uh, through through uh, Santa Barbara and into uh, San Simeon. Wait a minute, that's an Indian thing. Oh, okay. oh, we don't need none of them either. The, then up to San Francisco. Where does it stop? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and take Sepulveda till you get to uh, Los Angeles. Take, Sep- take Sepulveda till you get to Alvera Street and then turn right on Los Feliz. We want them not to come here. We name everything after one of their things. You can change that too, Drew. You're right. That, that's right. You, you got to think. Are you writing this down? No, we don't have to. It's 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 instinctive in you. All right. I know you, are, your your constituency expects this. Okay. Who are we talking we're to? Done. Kimberly? We're done. No, we're not. We're never done. It's never over. That's the whole thing. Okay. Not for another thirty seconds. Kimberly. Yeah, I'm still here. Break up with him. Yeah. And how about you move out of Riverside? I just moved back to Riverside. No. What happened? Job relocation. Mm. <laughs> now I'm not working there, so I can move back out there. Right. Do, you have, do you have any kids? No. Okay, good. Right. You're free. I know. Get out of there. Ooh. But how to do it. That's my whole thing. How to do it. Yeah. How about it's, uh, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> I don't like you. Yeah. Hear yeah. this, listen. Hey, look. You tell them, tell them you've hung out for five years. It's not going anywhere. You know it. I know it. Yeah. I'm moving on. That's all it. right? Okay. Don't leave the door that's open. That's it. But, but, yes, do not leave the door open. All right? Okay. All right. That's it. Very short, very sweet, very simple, but firm. She's 25 from Riverside. Sounds like she's 60. Mm, she? That's what that that's does. That's what yeah. it does. All right. We'll be back. All right, guys. Bottom line, here's the deal. Looking to hook up? Sick of wasting time with the wrong person? One call's all you need to make. Call the Dateline. The Dateline. 877-889-DATE. Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. 1-800-LOVE-191. Oh, wow, wow. You can go. You can go. Wow, wow. You can go. You can go. We'll be right back. Well, that's the show, everybody. I got to get uh, work on my uh, campaign uh, slogan. It was uh, it was Corolla in 2002 for a while until somebody uh, informed me that that uh, it wasn't you know I didn't have the year right. Oh, 
So now I got to oh. rework the whole oh, thing. Oh, we got to print up all. Oh no, all yeah. the flyers. And stuff. You'd think someone at Kinko's would have would have, oh, would have sounded off with that, but uh, oh. maybe thought it was a goof. So we're gonna I'm gonna fire my campaign manager for not knowing what year it was, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, revamp the slogan. All right. Okay. So far we have Corolla in the year that it is now, which I, I thought you. I thought it was a little bumpy. I thought we'd just go 2003, I, I but we you. want to play it safe. Oswaldo is not a good campaign manager. I told uh, you that. All right, all right. Make fun of the Latinos. So, until next time, it's Adam Corolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.